the last decade has seen a 4,500% increase in the number of rhino perched in South Africa. The current rate of poaching brings the tipping point for the species' survival closer every day. The chaos created by the rhino poaching crisis has produced a positive unintended consequence. The realization of just how little about the anatomy and physiology of the species is known. We can actually put a vehicle on Mars uh, that costs billions of dollars, but currently we don't know the physiology, we don't know the anatomy, we don't know which antibiotics and anti-inflammatories to use in a species that we're actually busy losing. Recognizing these and other shortcomings was the catalyst for the South African Veterinary Association to unite against rhino poaching. Through the Vet Rhino Fund, the association, its sister organization, the South African Veterinary Foundation, and vets from the Faculty of Veterinary Science at Onestapuert have created a platform to address issues around the day-to-day -day treatment of rhino and rhino poaching survivors, research required to support this work, and education. In its broadest terms, the Veterinary Rhino Fund is used to fund research, support a rhino response team, conduct countrywide veterinary workshops and educate learners at schools as well as the general public about the plight of the rhino. The current onslaught on rhino in South Africa is the second wave against the species in recent history. The mid-60s saw them teetering on the brink of extinction through socio-political issues. I know that the count that we did was, was really accurate, and that count was 437. Uh, but they were constantly under, the rhino constantly under threat, uh, mainly because of political threat. People like Ian Player proved that a paradigm shift in conventional conservation strategy can rescue a species. By 2007, the rhino population in South Africa was estimated to be 20,000. Conservationists had every right to be proud of the achievement. 13 rhino were poached that year, but no one was prepared for what was to follow. Originally used in the preparation of traditional Chinese medicine, the recent demand for rhino horn stems from a burgeoning Southeast Asian nouveau riche, eager to display their newfound wealth in the form of rhino horn bling. On the supply side, organized crime syndicates manipulate current anti-trade regulations, porous borders with transshipment countries, antiquated export permit checks, along with the inability to enforce illegal wildlife trafficking laws. To date, only a single syndicate has been successfully prosecuted. Poachers are easily recruited from impoverished rural villages that surround national and private reserves. Entire economies have been built on the income from poaching. The risk-reward profile is heavily stacked in the favor of poachers. Of the 1,004 rhino poached during 2013, more than 600 were slaughtered in the Kruger Park. It is a counterinsurgency war we're fighting here. We have up to two armed incursions per day, over 80 a month sometimes. Last year we were involved in about 60 firefights. On top of that we had 108 other sightings that did not result in a firefight. These people come in armed, 
They come in illegally, they plunder our natural resources and they exit illegally. And, and I think that is, that is equal to a war. As a countermeasure, Sand Park Rangers have changed their doctrine from reactive to proactive. In other words, stopping poachers from getting to the target. But the fight to win the war against poaching cannot be fought, nor will it be won in a single arena. It requires a multidisciplinary effort. Political agreements that are enforceable are essential if demand reduction in user countries are to become a reality. The re-examination of outdated and failed conservation strategies that have proven to be unenforceable. Building capacity and specialized training of environmental crime and customs officers. The introduction of environmental crime specialists into the judiciary. National and private reserves, breeders, rehabilitation centers, NGOs, intelligence gatherers, media, Jacaranda 94.2, genetic laboratories, and of course veterinarians, all play a vital role in the battle against poaching. Veterinary training and experience is usually conducted around treating animals that are ill or injured from natural causes, not the deliberate mutilation by humans. The human trauma experienced by vets when confronted by massacred animals is difficult to describe. It's really emotionally really difficult, you know, to stand next to a three or four ton animal which has been butchered in a way like that. We've seen some pretty gruesome things, you know, in this whole saga of, of rhino poaching, but this was a complete shock to us. To think that a human being would do this to an animal, just to come and cut his horn off for money, uh, we, we can't cope with that. So too, having to treat high monetary value animals with life-threatening wounds in the field, usually under less than ideal conditions, especially when the prognosis is almost a given. So what role does the South African Veterinary Association and the South African Veterinary Foundation play in saving rhino? As a start, we support research into the anatomy and physiology that provides a platform for improved surgical as well as field procedures to improve the species survivability. We have arranged several workshops nationally for vets and vet assistants to share knowledge and experience regarding the best treatment available for animals that have survived poaching. We have supported Saving the Survivors Rhino Response Team, assisting the veterinarians with travel arrangements, flights and medicine needed to treat survivors and orphaned rhinos. We are involved in an advocacy group to ensure stricter controls of scheduled immobilizing drugs and that these drugs can only be administered by veterinarians. I've got no doubt in my mind eh, that, that the, the availability of that drug M99 has got to be limited to as few people as possible. History has shown how unscrupulous individuals use highly scheduled anesthetic drugs like M99 to assist poachers. We're entirely dependent on large amounts of funds in, to, to buy equipment and, and, to, and, and the manpower to, to, to facilitate this you know, fighting the scourge. From a conservation point of view, every single calf, every single casualty that we can save contributes to the overall conservation of rhino. Every calf or casualty that survives and can go back into the wild is then part of the bigger population. We need funding to do research because all of these things cost money, you know, to find out how much and what kind of antibiotic we need to use in rhino, to find out how the anatomy of the horn exactly looks find out where your, where your paranasal sinuses run, to find out what kind of anti-inflammatories we need to use. All of this costs money, so we dearly need money, not only for anti-poaching, but also to drive this research so that we can successfully, at the end of the day, treat rhino. Our efforts are already paying dividends in groundbreaking new information on the maxiofacial anatomy of white rhino, blood parameters of injured white rhino, study on the leg anatomy of white rhino, the histoanatomy of rhino horn and permanently dehorning rhinos. The South African Veterinary Association is a voluntary association of veterinarians, representing the majority of registered veterinarians in South Africa. We are united against rhino poaching and we are determined 
to make a major contribution to the survival of the rhino, one rhino at a time. You can help us in this fight by buying rhino shirts and bracelets to show your support for the rhino. You can help spread the message by asking news networks in your country to broadcast the program you've just seen. You can make a donation via the Umbrella Vet Rhino Fund into the underlying funds or via givengain.com so we can do our best to help save this magnificent species. Visit our website or contact Sister Christelle Fourie to find out how you can make a difference to conserving rhino.